Hey there, Postal here. So today we are taking out... Man, if I could type... If I could type, that would help. We're taking out the F7U. Now, to be 100% honest with you, this is not a plane I fly very often at all. It is not a plane I very much enjoyed at all when I first got. Um, but I was just sitting there thinking. Um... You yeah, know the the t the higher tier multi rolls. So basically, tier eight and above multi rolls. I guess we'll get this freaking command center while we're at it. Really tend to struggle in the current meta. Um, they're all just a little bit too slow. They're a little bit too not maneuverable enough. They're you know, just have all these struggles, as I'm showing you right now. Um, and they don't typically hit hard enough, to be honest. So we're talking the Tier 10 American, this F-84F. I think it's a really well-balanced machine. But I think it's still too weak, right? We're talking the BVP-215.02. Um, again, well-balanced machine, in my opinion. But it's gonna struggle... Uh, you know, in matchups versus heavies, versus the Yak 30s, things of that nature. It's just going to struggle unless it's in a flight. Uh, the I-215. I think it's a really fun plane. I don't think it can carry a freaking piece of straw. Um, it's fun to blap the crap out of, um, you know, enemies. Heck, even, um, I don't know what the hell these are. Bombs are these are 500 pound bombs, so I'm sure that's overkill. But we'll overkill. Why not? Um, and so the really that kind of and, and then, oh, and then there's the hunter. The hunter is the one, right? It's the one that everybody seems to to play. It's the one that seems to have the the most balance. There's this. You don't see this out there very often, unless you're um, a fan of Kaim and Viticus' channel. And he will show you how to actually play this plane. I'm just going to show you how I play it <laughs> for the first time in 18 months. Um, I guess I better turn, huh? There we go. There we go. Um... This plane actually is quite good. The reload on the bombs is two minutes. The uh, the guns are you've got four 20 millimeter cannons that hit really really well. These are actually the same cannons that you have on the F2H. They're the same cannons that you have on the F6U. They're the same cannons that you have on the XF90. The difference on this one is they're they're not quite center. I mean they're almost center. Um, so they can kind of struggle versus smaller aircraft like, you know, Jawas, uh, or Yak-30s for that matter. This plane is super fast. Not just for multi roll it's just fast in general. So your focus should be on your airspeed with this plane. You have the ability to turn tight, don't get me wrong. Now, mine's still, you know, out of the box. It's not stock, but it's not, um, specialized. And speaking of Jawas, excellent. I guess you can still win those engagements with Jawas, huh? Let's go ahead and turn around here. I don't have this plane set up for any kind of maneuverability, like none whatsoever. And it's actually still pretty turny. I mean, enough anyway for what I need this plane to do. Let's go ahead, and I don't even need the, my bombs anymore. Like I said, it's 2,000 pounds worth of bombs that I dropped. A freaking ton. Literally a ton of bombs. Um, it was overkill, I'm quite sure of it, but it was fun, and it made sure that we actually killed that thing the thing. As I go flying through a B2. Ugh. Postal needs to take us some coffee. <laughs> um, hopefully we don't lose that um, that freaking military base. We shall see. 
We've got the Yak-30 on the enemy team, is really going to be the main thing we need to look out for. Probably going to load up right behind him here. I mean, right in front of him here. Yep. How annoying. Oh, actually, he was turning, so how annoying for him. Boost on. Moving back around. Get him knocked out if possible. He's got no hit points, peoples. Thank you. Somebody do something. How many freaking Jawas are on this play on this game here? Big ol' American booty! It's so easy to hit. But I've also got copious amounts of speed, and that speed um, is something that I'm really enjoying on this plane. It's something that really sets this plane apart from the other multi-rolls. Even the BVP-212 that has a pretty darn good amount of speed, this plane feels more comfortable with that speed. Um, it's just a, f it's just one of those planes that like, I didn't think I'd like it, I flew it a handful of times, I didn't like it. It's probably my own mentality about the situation. Since I've been flying it, blah, um, more recently, I just, well, I mean, the few games I've played today, I've actually quite enjoyed this plane. How am I going faster than a freaking heavy fighter? Go. Got this Yak 30 we need to take care of. That's it. There's no way to break through to you now. You're on your own. Man, oh man. So that shows you what these freaking 20 mil cannons can do, right? Um, yeah, he knocked out an engine of mine, but I was able to, and he didn't he didn't use his maneuverability, he just kinda spun. So I was able to just keep my guns on target there. And that's what these guns can do. These are really, really strong guns. If for no other reason to like this plane, it's about the guns. And again, these are the same guns that are on the F6U, which everybody knows I love. The F2H, which is my favorite freaking tier 9 plane. Certainly my favorite um, at, uh, heavy at tier 9, for sure. So you'd say to yourself, well, what the hell? Like, well, of course you're going to like the F7U. Well, you know what? I guess you're right. <laughs> I was focused more on its inability to maneuver, when the reality of the, the matter is this is just a ridiculously well-balanced freaking assault vehicle. Let's kick ass and take names, right? I mean, again, this is just melting down planes like an F2H would. I'm gonna die here. But in you know, it's on a tier 10 platform instead of a tier 9 platform. I'm proud of you, pilots. Head back but home. still really well balanced. Let's go head back. Alright, now because that battle didn't have all the ground attack and like just actual multi-rolliness that I'd like to show off. Um I'm gonna put in a couple clips here from another battle that I had. This battle ended really quickly. Um, but it ended really quickly because I think I was able to do exactly what needed to be done, and that's how I like my multi-rolls. So we'll fade into the first one here, there'll be a second portion, and then we'll go to the end results. Alright. A complete goofball on our team here. But we've got a lot of enemies on uh, that I need to take care of here. Go ahead and start taking care of them, huh? So this is a true multi-roll in the fact that it can do a lot of ground damage. It has 2,000 pounds worth of bombs. 
You heard that right. And it can do some major damage to the ground, as I've already done in the center there. Um, we need to, we've got Cranky here, he's going to try to do everything he can to knock us out. So let's get him knocked out in turn. Up and over, because as maneuverable as that, uh, as that GA is, it can't do up and over like this. All right, now let's go get some bombers. Go up at a decent angle. Anyway, so this plane kind of is the full package in that regard. It can hit pretty darn hard. These are the same 20 millimeter cannons that you get on the F6U, that you get on the F2H, and that you get on the XF90. Nobody would ever say that those particular planes are weak. Uh, although I guess not a lot of people like the F6U, but shame on them. Um, so you get really good hitting 20 millimeter cannons, as you can see here. You know when I'm actually hitting. You get really strong hitting bombs, right? And so what do you have going against you? Well, your maneuverability kind of sucks. But to be honest, it's not the worst thing in the world. You've got a lot, a lot of airspeed. You've got the best, or tied for the best airspeed uh, of 210 multi rolls with the Hunter. And so yeah, it might not have you know, like all the flexibility that a Hunter has. You don't have the 30 millimeter cannons that it have has. You don't have the rockets. I'd make the argument though, that this isn't a really, really good place. Um, you just saw exactly what this plane can do. I need to avoid getting in the middle of the freaking spawn point over there. But this plane is definitely going to be able to hit hard. It's going to be able to flip sectors. It's going to do really what you want multi rolls to do, in my opinion. Um, and so let's see what we need to do here. I guess we're going to go to the center. Drop some bombs here. We got 20 seconds. It's going to take less than 20 seconds for the bombs to hit the ground. So give me a second here. Got 13 seconds. Probably want to wait till like five seconds, maybe. And these are 500 pound bombs, so I probably only need to drop one of them in the center there, in the center there, there, and there. Apparently, I did not do enough damage, but that's okay. We're gonna try to knock, we're gonna use our airspeed now to try to knock out a heavy fighter. And yeah, this is not freaking HG3 speed. But I had a lot of speed going. And I was able to keep that momentum and um, knock out his engine, which, you know, gave me. I'm not going for that guy. All right, so nothing too crazy there, honestly. Um, this is the second battle back in this plane, and the first battle, it wouldn't even let me load in properly. So, um, yay to the game. 13,000 personal points, 10,000 damage to both the ground and to the um, air. Taking a look at the bombs, the overall damage, cumulative damage these bombs can put out is 20,800. I've got um, no additives to that. So that's just base. So that means I could have just dropped two bombs on that one sector. So this is me learning stuff, right? <laughs> uh, but think about that. I barely used the bombs and I overkilled when I dropped the bombs. That means these bombs can do some serious, serious flipping. And um, man, freaking Lamp got, uh, he got his chevrons. I didn't get my chevrons, meh. Um, you can do some serious, serious damage, not just to air targets, which I did almost 11,000, but to ground targets, considering I did one drop of overkill. There's no reason why you can't get, you know, at least 20,000, obviously, but like 40,000 damage to ground targets in a battle where you need to keep flipping sectors. We had all the sectors to begin with, and so this plane was more focused on defense um, than it was on attack. 
and yeah so this is really really um, I'm really excited about this play I'm having a lot of fun um, in the two games the one and a half games that I've played in it have been really good um, not heavies postal you're, you're in multi rolls so if you compare this particular plane to something like the BVP 215 you can see you've got significantly more airspeed than that plane has if you look at it compared to something like the Hunter you've got a little bit more airspeed than the Hunter has granted keep in mind I don't have any of these specialized I don't have any of my tier 10 multi rolls specialized Compare it to the F80, um, F84F. You've got a decent amount more speed than that plane. I'm not even going to look at the Java because that does not have speed. And I'm almost positive. I mean, I'm going to look at this one just because. Yeah, this is pretty low airspeed, right? Um, and the Java. Oh, what the hell? We'll just look at the Java just for shiggles. Yeah, very low airspeed. Um, but your bombs and rockets on this, yeah, the rating on the bombs and rockets for the BVP215 is higher, but that's because mainly most of these are air to air. The bombs and rockets on the F-84F do a crap ton of damage, 30,000. Um, granted, keep in mind, I probably have that boosted to the pilot. I'm not sure. can't think off the top of my head. Um, but the, those are all rockets, right? Like, you've got you've to take time out of your battle to aim your rockets, fire your rockets, and be done with your rockets. Oh, yeah, here's the 10% um, damage across the board boosted. So it's probably like something like 27,000 or what would that be, 26,000 damage base. Um, and so, yeah, that has that has more. You've, same with the Hunter. The Hunter overall cumulative damage is going to be about 30,000 bombs and rockets combined. Keep in mind, though, 20,000 of that is your rockets. 10,000 of that is your five, you have two 500-pound bombs. Um... And so again, same story. Like you've got to aim your rockets. You've got to get out of the battle and get back in. The hunter's probably—I'm uh, not even probably. The hunter's still going to be the best tier ten multi roll in the game because you've got these ridiculous thirty millimeter cannons. Yeah, you've got those rockets, but you've also got two bombs. So if you just need—if you just want to drop two bombs and continue doing what you're doing, then so be it. You've got really good airspeed, not quite to the um, to the point of the um, cutlass, but I mean it's splitting hairs at that point. Um, and technically you've got better maneuverability which is kind of mind blowing because I feel like the Hunter isn't the most maneuverable plane but I guess it is more maneuverable than said Cutlass um, and you've got higher airspeed so that's all the reasons why you'd have better, um, better time in the Hunter than you would in the Cutlass but that being said the Cutlass does have these, these very consistent 20 millimeter cannons and so it's kind of got that mid um, balance that, so on the F-84 you've got the machine guns that can be very frustrating because they just don't take down those heavy targets. The BVP-215 and the Cutlass both have 20 millimeter cannons. Um, and so you just have that consistency on these two planes. The Hunter has 30 millimeter cannons, which you know puts out incredible amounts of damage, um, but can also overheat, can be fickle sometimes. And sometimes not hit the planes you think they're supposed to be hitting. Um, but still, the Hunter's going to be the best, right? Um, the F7U, though, has a lot of good things going for it. A lot, a lot of good things. And I haven't even specialized it. So you can get, you can still, you know, obviously upgrade the guns. Yeah, I'm going to be able to upgrade the engine and I'm probably going to put lightweight um, power unit on here to give some more maneuverability because I really do feel like this plane in flight it feels a lot more maneuverable than it shows on paper and I think um, you know accentuating that uh, certainly can't be a bad thing I'm also going to probably um, thinking about it probably take off the improved polished skin and actually go with a lightweight wing frame eventually I'll wait until I get my pilot built up a little bit, but I'm thinking if I put Engine Guru 2 on my pilot next, um, then I can balance that out. That'll give me more airspeed and I can get more maneuverability with the airframe. I really do feel like this plane has the ability with this big old wing to get some really tight um, corners going. Um, we'll see as I continue to move on. So, Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this flight. It wasn't like the world's best flight, 
Um, I'm gonna try to do another battle and see if I don't have a lot of time left in my day already. Um, see if I can get a more um, balanced attack where I'm actually dropping bombs and things of that nature. But have you gotten the tier 10 uh, F7U Cutlass? Do you agree with my assessment? Is it something that you're working towards? This line in general is is definitely the better of the two American multi-role lines. And to be honest, it's for the line itself is probably the best multi-role line in the game. Um, this is the Corsair line, so you've got all those F4Us and the F2G, which at tier eight, I mean, all the tier eight multi rolls are a little lacking, but the F2G I think is the the best true multi roll of the group. Then you go to the F94D, which is just stellar, um, which everybody loves, and then you end with this, which uh, is really, really growing on me. I'm really, really enjoying it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this particular video, uh, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.